Now in this presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about subtracting in different bases. And I wanted to highlight this separate from our, our previous discussion on arithmetic, because subtraction is a little is a little different. The process for you, what we call borrowing is, I think, just a, a little bit less intuitive than the process for carrying, which you know, is what often happens in the addition situation. So first, I, I want to look at just, just a base 10 scenario right? and kind of talk about what's happening here to make sure you really understand why we do the things we do. This is, I think that'll make it hopefully make it a little clearer when we start doing this with numbers in a different base. So the way we work subtraction, right, we're looking at the first column and hopefully, you know, you immediately see we have a problem. Uh, we can't, uh, in this context, subtract one from zero. We need the number that we're subtracting to be smaller than the number we're subtracting from. So the process for handling this is, is what we call borrowing. I'm going to kind of politely borrow a 10 from the 10s column, which reduces the 9 to 8. And then I'm just going to kind of slide that 10 that I borrowed over here temporarily into the units column. And now I can do the subtraction. Right, 10 minus 1 is 9, and over here back in the second column now, 8 minus 7 is 1. All right, but I really want to, I want you to think about that 9 for just a minute. Right, where did that 9 come from? Well, when we do 10 minus 1, all right, now, and now think about this here. 10 is the smallest two-digit base 10 number. And when I go back 1, from the smallest two-digit number, I get the biggest single-digit number. The biggest single-digit number in base uh, 10 is 9. All right, so now let's look at the, at the similar situation. Get very simple problem here, right? Very small problem. But this is key to the entire process of subtracting in a different base. Here I have that same situation. I have the smallest two-digit number, and I'm subtracting from it one. All right, so when I do this, I'm going to get the biggest single-digit number. But remember, this is base six. Just like nine is the smallest single-digit number in base 10, the smallest single-digit number in base six is five. I so said that's where we end up here. All right now, let's take a look. Let's take a look at a bigger scenario. All right, and it's going to be very similar. All right, you see over here in, in the units column, I'm a little stuck again because I can't subtract zero from one. So I'm going to repeat that same that same kind of procedure that I used in with base ten. I'm going to kind of quietly borrow one from the tens column and move it over into the units column. And now we have a situation just like what we saw on the previous slide. 10 minus 1 in base 6 gives me the small, uh, the largest base 6 digit, which is 5. All right now, what you see it's going to happen again here, right? When I go to the second column, I can't do that subtraction either. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of quietly borrow 1 from the 3 move it over into the tens column and we have the same scenario here 10 minus 1 in base 6 is still 5 is that small the largest single digit number and then here on the left hand on the final column right this is you 2 minus 0 which is 2 and again right always be sure that you're indicating the base all right so now take a look at this guy right try uh, try doing this one yourself. Pause the presentation, right? To see if you can't work this out, then start it up, and we'll, and we'll go through how I would solve it. All right, so what we're doing here is we, we have to borrow again. Yep, because I can't subtract 3 from 1 in base 7 any more than I could do it in base 10. So I'm going to borrow 1 from the 4. And this 1 becomes an 11. Now, you need to think about what we're doing here, right? What would have happened if this was base 10? 
If this was base 10, I would have said 11 minus 3. So think about what that means, right? Number line helps here, right? I'm going to go 3 back from 11. That's 10, 9, 8. So this would be 8 in base 10. Well, let's do the same thing, right? If you really kind of let, let's do the visual here. I'm doing this in base 7 now. So I'm starting here at um, 11. And when I go back one from 11, I get 10. And that that's OK. That's a valid base 7 number. These are all base 7. Kind of keep that in mind here. OK, now when I try to back off a second one from 10, that's the smallest two-digit number. So when I go back one from 7, I end up when I go back one from 10, I end up at six. And I, when I go back one more, I end up at five. So that's my first digit. Okay, now you see here, I gotta do it again, right? I have to borrow one from the two. Three becomes a 13. And again, let's, let's visualize. It'll, it'll get to where you can do this. If you do a lot of these, it'll get to where you can do this as naturally as you do it in base 10. But for now, I, I think it helps to really kind of count things out. I'm going to start 11, 10, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Now let's count them. I'm going to start at 11 and go back 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, so I end up at two, and just bring down the one. One minus zero is one, and of course, this is all base seven.